The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, and High Stick NT. So another pest that uh, we are familiar with here in Ontario is soybean aphids. Uh, first came in 2001, so it's been 13, almost 13 years of uh, being present here. Um, we have seen a, a change in the population over time. Uh, the overall increase of use of, of Cruiser Max uh, treated seed is starting to see soybean aphids be less of a cyclical problem and every other year issue. Uh, that said, um, it also means that there's not as much of a buildup of natural enemies ready to take over for soybean aphids. So I'm predicting that 2013 could be a soybean aphid year. And so I think it's, it's a good idea to rehash the thresholds and what growers need to be looking for and doing. Um, first, soybean aphids will, they overwinter on buckthorn, but they also can get blown in. Uh, Cruiser Max uh, treated seed tends to give you control for about the first 50 days after planting, but then after that, soybean aphids can recolonize on these plants. Um, they do start in pockets, and they will be quite heavy on a plant. Um, anywhere, you know, you'll see thousands. But those, as soon as they get crowded, they will decide to make the next generation have wings and start flying around and redisperse themselves. So you never should really, there really aren't any thresholds in the vegetative stage because we, research has shown you just don't see any yield benefit um, spraying at that time. And again, you're killing off any natural enemies that may be coming in and trying to take care of them in those pockets. But once they <clears throat> start to spread out, you want to start scouting on a weekly basis, um, looking, of course, under the leaves, turning leaves over, you want to look on the leaves, um, particularly on the, um, the upper part of the plant, um, looking, and they like the new growth on the plant too. Um, and do about 10 plants in you know, five areas of the field or random plants um, throughout the field. Uh, but you want to get an idea of what the population is like. Threshold start once these plants are in flower. It really is the reproductive stage of the plants that are most at risk and, and need to be protected. The threshold again is 250 aphids per plant on 80% of the plants in the field. And that's during R1 and up to the end of R5 stage when there's actually, you rub the top of those seed pods and you feel a seed growing and filling inside. Um, past that, you need a lot more aphids, and in fact, you also have to start worrying about the pre-harvest intervals of the insecticides. But of course, it isn't as easy as that. Um, we want to take into consideration all those natural enemies. Uh, natural enemies can feed, and, and when we say natural enemies, we're talking about ladybugs, we're talking about surfid fly maggots. We have an, a really great, and it started here in Ontario and is now spreading to the U.S. and Quebec, um, we have a parasitic wasp that um, was brought in at one of the introductions of soybean aphids and has been controlling our aphids um, really well. So you want to look for those aphid mummies. Um, and all of those in combination can really keep the aphid population down. And a lot of times you'll see the soybean aphid population fluctuate up and down around that threshold. So really you want to see that threshold increasing um, before, you want to see the number of aphids on the plant increasing before you really do spray because uh, a, a true increase would indicate that the natural enemies aren't keeping up and aren't able to, to feed on all those aphids that are there. If it's fluctuating or even going up and down, um, it, it tells you that um, the natural enemies still are at war and doing a good job for you. The problem with spraying um, too close to that threshold when it's fluctuating, you really do, uh, these insecticides work much better on the natural enemies than the aphids. The aphids are baby making machines that they just keep popping out uh, aphids soon as one generation is, is killed off, there, there's more. And you never get effective control like you do on the natural enemies. So um, even if 70% of the aphids are controlled, that 30% can rebuild the population quite quickly, especially in the absence of the natural enemies. 
sounds complicated and uh, to help with this issue, um, we developed the uh, AFID Advisor, the app for smartphones, um, myself and Rebecca Hallett with her grad student, Christy Valley. And uh, we have taken and understood what the natural enemy population does and which ones are the most um, hungry, to sort of speak, and the best at controlling aphids. And we have developed an app where you can input the data that you're seeing in the field and it will finally help tell you, do you have enough natural enemies or don't you? And whether you have to spray, if, if you want to wait a few days and, and check again, or if you don't have to spray at all. Um, so we're hoping that everybody takes the time, it's free, um, go and download that app before things get hopping so that uh, you're a little more familiar with it. It's on uh, aphid, aphidapp.com and uh, both for Blackberry and iPhones. And so then everybody could be uh, ready for the season. Thank you.